Hi everybody, I'm Danny, and today I'm going to give you a quick introduction to the level editor that comes with Mondrian Plastic Reality, known as Mondrian Maker. Now, whether you've never made a level in a game before, or you're an expert level designer, or anywhere in between, I think you're going to find a lot to like about Mondrian Maker. Our goal from the moment we started building this editor was for you to be able to build Mondrian levels in seconds and make them fully featured in just a couple minutes. Now this video is only an introduction to the editor, as we're always adding new tools to it, so a lot of this is going to be subject to change. But even with that in mind, this will help you get started. Today, I'll only be going over the features that aren't going anywhere, so in the main menu, scroll on down to the Maker option, and let's dive in. So right off the bat, you can see that Mondrian Maker is split up into five containers. We're going to start on the right side. You can see we have the yellow and the blue containers. The yellow container is where the Mondrian Maker Mini Manual, or MMM for short, lives. By clicking on the category links, uh, you can read about all uh, the various features of Mondrian Maker, and even view the reference for keyboard shortcuts. The blue container is where all the tooltips live. And these will display when you hover over different items. Just more ways to help you out. On the left, we have our logo for good measure up at the top, uh, followed by the main menu, which as of right now includes the following buttons. So we have new level. Uh, this clears the current level's field and data and lets you start fresh. We have open level, which lets you open a level file from your active or inactive levels folders. Uh, active levels are the levels that the game will actually search for when playing, and inactive levels are ones that you want the game to ignore. Uh, this window also includes activate and deactivate buttons, so for instance if I were to go to this level and hit deactivate, it would end up in my inactive levels folder, and if I reactivate it, it goes back to my active levels folder. Um, this also includes a delete level function as well as uh, an import button which we will be going over in a different video at a later date. The save your level button uh, lets you save your current level to your active levels folder or save a backup of your level to your inactive levels folder. The colorize button right here uh, recolors all the blocks in the field which is the main container right in the middle. This is a useful way to preview how your level will look with different color palettes, or you can use the all black style to help with alignment, and we'll be looking more at this button in a minute. Uh, the difficulty button, this button iterates the difficulty variant of your level. By using this button, you can change your blocks to assign different modifiers and block types to your level at each difficulty, essentially allowing you to turn one level into four. And finally, we have the play level button. Uh, this is the button that you click to test out your level at the currently selected difficulty. Clicking this button will bring up the save window along with a save and play button. Uh, this will jump you right into the game. Uh, as for this button right here, this is the share your level button. This isn't working yet. Uh, you can see I'm clicking on it. It doesn't do anything. Don't worry about it. Underneath the main menu, we have level info. So right here you can type in some general info about your level including title and author. As of right now, the title is used as your file name, so you need to type something in here in order to save your level. Underneath the level info, we have the palette. This is where you'll be selecting blocks for your level and adding presets like angle and scale before you drop them in. To create a block, simply click on the black block shape and you can see that it immediately snaps to your cursor. Then just bring it anywhere inside the circular wall. You can see if you try to click outside the circular wall, it won't place it there. It has to be in the game field. Uh, and then just click again to drop it. It's as easy as that. Now if you want to say rotate it before you bring it in, use the up and down arrows on the left number to rotate the block. Let's say 20 degrees. Now when you create a block, it comes pre-rotated. And when you drop it in, you can see this one is 20 degrees, this one is 0 degrees. You can also adjust the scale of the block using the right number. Let's say we set that to 50. Now when I create a block, I get a nice big block rotated 20 degrees. If you don't like the blocks you've got in the field, you can hold right click to bring up the eraser tool. 
Then just simply run the mouse over any block to get rid of it. Back in the palette, you can bring uh, blocks to any setting you want. Say, zero degrees. So let's just drop this back down to zero. And let's go with 10% scale, which is the smallest. If you hold shift while creating a block, you'll go into stamp mode. Stamp mode lets you infinitely place down block uh, copies of your current block. Uh, this is really useful if you know you want more than one block of a certain type. And when you're done in stamp mode, you can either place the last block or right click to get rid of it. Uh, let's see, so the last thing to note about the palette is the block shapes. So far we've only been using hexagons, but if we hover over the block button for just a couple seconds, you'll see we actually have five different choices. Hexagons, squares, stars, triangles, and diamonds. We can use any of these five shapes to build out our levels. But before I get into building, we've got one last set of tools to explore. One of the most requested features for Mondrian Maker has made it in as a version EX2, and that's the grid. The grid is not only a visual aid for your blocks, but if you toggle Snap to Grid, any blocks you create will align with the grid itself. You can turn off Show Grid to toggle the grid's visibility, as you can see, and you can uh, change the size of the grid by clicking on the grid preview. The grid can be 10, 20, 30, or 40 pixels. This gives you a pretty decent range of options to play around with, and using the grid makes building levels even easier. So you can see, as now when I drag blocks around, for instance right now I'm using stars, as I'm dragging these around, they snap into the grid. This looks fun and all, but let's go ahead and build something proper. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the new level button to clear all those blocks out and start nice and fresh. For this video, we're going to build a simple level out of default size squares and diamonds using the grid to help us. The first thing I'm going to do is bring my size back up to 25% and I'm going to go with squares. Now, with a square ready to go, I'm going to hold shift to go into stamp mode, place the first one in the middle, and I can see that I don't like this grid setting. So I'm going to bring this to 30. And then, I can also see that this is not properly centered. So I can click and hold on a block to go back into free move mode and recenter it. And that looks pretty good to me. So then, I can go back into stamp mode, and let's say I just place three there, and three there. Awesome, so now, I've got a nice row of blocks. Then using this, I can create identical rows above and below this row, but let's cut the scale down just a smidge. Let's go 20%. Then, taking the squares, I can make a row of smaller blocks up above it and a row of smaller blocks below it. And finally, uh, just to add some flavor to it, I'm going to hover over the block shape and I'm going to go with diamonds, but I want to rotate this diamond into more of a rhombus kind of shape. So I'm going to rotate this to... Yeah, 52 degrees looks right. Now when I bring this in, I can see, again, I don't quite like where the grid is placing the block. So I'm going to erase this one, and I'm going to set the grid size back to 10. And now I can see that I can place the diamonds flush with that block. And if you can't see it, I can click the palette button to change to all reds, all greens, all blues, grayscale, or all black. Uh, and all black is very useful for checking out alignment. Um, just for now, I'm gonna set it to blue because I like I like the blue scheme. So now, I go back into stamp mode, place the last few in this row, and now for the bottom row, I could put them like this, but I kind of want them to be the opposite angle. So I am gonna hold the down button on angle. 
and bring this round to 360 minus 52 degrees, which is 308. And there we go. So here, back into stamp mode, hold shift. And I can just stamp these in just like that. Now, I like the look of this level, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this Central Processor and give an author name. And we go ahead and test this out. So if I hit play, save and play, it loads right into the game. Now, remember, when you test a level out in game, you're going to get it uh, pretty bare bones. It's not going to give you any power-ups, um, mainly because you need to be able to prove that you can beat the level without uh, the assistance of, say, bombs or wall locks or uh, any of those things that spice the game up. So I'm just going to go ahead and play through this, grab a gem while I'm at it, why not? Ah, oh, well, I screwed up, but that's okay. Uh, I, you know, can always hit play again to try again to beat it, uh, but not that big a deal for right now. So there you go, guys. That's an introductory look at Mondrian Maker. Next time, we'll be going over the context menu, which you'll get if you click on a block, and we'll go through all the ways you can adjust your blocks, apply modifiers, or change them into different block types. But for now, don't forget to pick up the game on itch.io for just $15, or get 30% off if you happen to own the original Mondrian Abstraction and Beauty on itch as well. Thanks for playing, and as always, see you next time.